Hey there boys girls of YouTube world. Today the Dove Dog and I are gonna see if we can't finally get this 1990 regular cab short box back on the road after taking all the guts out of a rolled over 1995 Chevrolet extended cab and swapping them over. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about where I'm at. I'll give you a quick update. Chin did a few things while I was down in Oklahoma screwing off at Puddin's. Oh, you did it? Okay, I'll give you the credit and some pets. They got the grill, front fascia, whatever you want to talk about installed. They got the AC condenser, the external transmission cooler, all factory stuff installed. Looks like we got to do the uh, valance or filler panel or whatever in there. Um, AC compressors in place. We got to put the V-belt on. They got the air box in. We got a little tidying up to do yet under here. I got to put the clip on the cruise control cable. We got to put the air cleaner on it. Uh, like I said, the belt. I'm sure there's some wiring that maybe has some uh, loose ends. Maybe not. We gotta hook up our bulkhead connector. Here's where the team effort took place. Here's where Chin shines. This column and brake pedal support all had to come out of the other pickup. So we drilled the spot welds out, got her welded in here. Make sure to clean out your cowl so when you're welding, you don't light the leaves on fire that are in there. And also, it's a good time to get those out of there. Yeah, it's a different bracket for, I think this is for ABS or something and there's a column support down here that the other one doesn't have and then it sticks out further He also got the hole cut through the floor for the shift cable because he's got a shift cable the earlier style Have a rod that comes through the bottom of the column goes down to the transmission the One thing we got to do yet is this is the firewall off the other truck This is where the column passes through and this is what the 90 looks like so we got to open that hole up a little bit And then it's oblong so we're gonna do a little cutting and trimming there and then we can put the dash in. We can run our wire harness for our dome light and all that stuff. Put our carpet and our seats in. DB pressure wash the carpet. It doesn't look very good. So we're gonna maybe try to use the extended cab carpet because it's in a lot better shape. We also determined that this door needs some new uh, hinge pins as well. He also stripped down that parts truck. So we got the fuel pump, the fuel pump harness, the tail light harness, all that stuff. So we can put that stuff in there. And that's what we're gonna do right away while we got it on the lift. We can do that interior stuff anywhere in the shop but we like to keep the lift open so that's the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna lift this thing up we're gonna pull the fuel tank out and the tail light harness fuel pump harness all that good stuff and we're gonna put the one out of the 95 in there hopefully it's in better shape it doesn't look like it. it's all cut up around the tail lights for uh trailer connectors and all that good stuff you got the fleas again he says no i ain't never had the fleas all right let's get to work we got skid plates to put on yet too it looks like huh yeah Got the dash, the steering column, pulled back out. Uh, these supports for the brake pedal, master cylinder, and the dash are different between 90. The 95 is different. It's a little bit longer, sticks out about two inches. So I'm going to drill out those four spot welds, take the rest of the nuts out for the booster master cylinder setup and then there's two more spot welds there it does look like there's something up oh there is some spot welds up underneath there on this one I gotta double check on the other one but get those all pulled out so that comes out easy this is the 95 same four spot welds across the top two back in there oh, I can't tell if there is any up there but I guess we're gonna find out this is where the column shifter cable goes through the floor I do have it marked here but all I did was cut it out and use it as a template to give it the uh, general location for it it's pretty long and pretty flexible but as long as I had that oval to seal up where the shift cable goes through the floor and it holds this grommet that's the shift cable that goes up to the column. So, a little cutting, a little drilling, probably a little welding. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Here we go. Well, poke through there so that's on me gotta fix that and then I drill a little too much there must have been off a little bit on the spot weld so I didn't quite want to go 
So I gotta fill that one too. But you can use this oval hole to center the weldment off of. Go from there. This one did not have the spot welds up on top here, so I'd have to drill up. They had this glue, and I gave her a couple wax with the uh, spot welder remover and a hammer. It popped out. I did end up drilling through the firewall on this one as well, in the same exact spot, but I did not mess this up. Now I got the windshield wiper panel off. Looks like I need to clean it underneath there anyway. The inside was just, this is full of pine tree branches and needles and whatnot. Looks like I'll be able to get some access to tap it back and be able to weld that back shut. Clean this up and then try to get in there. All right, I kind of got everything blocked off. So we'll get sparks and everything. I'm gonna start filling the hole I made, try to get that column support welded in. Alrighty, I got my hole filled there and here. And I also filled this one in a little bit because it was pretty thin. And I spritzed some primer on it, keep it from rusting after I weld it. I'm gonna have to do it again after I weld anyway. Did a little bit underneath there as well. So now I'll fit it in there and mark where I gotta grind. So I got some good metal showing for welding. And then I'll weld it in. I don't like those turned out too bad. Got the two up here, and then I got the two in there, and the two up there done. Might try to dress them up a little bit. Maybe see if I can't find some white paint. Probably primer. Just keep them from rusting. Probably also gonna have to find something to paint those ones in the cowl, because those are definitely gonna get wet. Before I start cleaning everything up, I'm gonna cut this hole for the shift linkage. There we go. Let's see if I can get that shifter grommet through there. We just got back from Oklahoma and Mojo ripped apart a Vortec 454. He found a bunch of junk, huh? Yep. Oh, look at that. He's even putting assembly loop, putting it back together. So we found out this thing was a manual and that pilot bearing was hammered out into the crankshaft. So that could probably be saved. But the crank slid four and a half, had too much end play, so it kind of rubbed on the block. So need some crank work. Should probably line bore it. Bored out, the rings were stuck in one of the pistons. This guy, in here, ain't put her in yet. It's all virgin material, but the bearings were shot. That lobe on the camshaft's shot because this roller bearing didn't roll anymore. See, she's pretty uh, flaky there and flat there. So, I'm guessing that made a lot of noise. So between the pilot bearing and that roller on the bottom of the lifter, 
I don't know why they would have taken this engine and put it in anything else, but I'm glad we didn't follow through with making it work because we'd be in the market for a 454 Vortec. So if anybody wants a 454 Vortec block, they got an arm wrestle mojo for it. Good core. We're not, uh, we're not gonna tell you it's a good engine. It's, uh, it's a good core to be rebuilt. 150 bucks. Come, come give Mojo the cash. Yeah. No yeah. deliveries. No change. No holds. No promises. And no promises. I promise you it's junk. Yeah. And the 400 we found, yeah, that needs to go get machined. It, it could probably be thrown back together, but since it's a virgin 400 block, uh, needs a crank turned and bored and all that stuff. And uh, it's 400 block, it's virgin 400 bucks, bring cash. And you can have that one too. No deliveries, no holds, cash only. So yeah, these used engines are really junk around here. I kind of want to keep the 400, but somebody will give me 400 bucks for it. And now uh, we don't have to worry about building a 400 around here that'll probably never happen. So looks like the back of the tank, we got to take that one bolt out of the strap. And at the front here, we gotta take the whole bracket out. So you take those four bolts going through the frame, looks like somebody already took one nut off. And then obviously we gotta take the fuel lines off and the fuel filler neck and the return hose and the breather hose and all that stuff. So well, let's get right to it. Chin says you can't sneak the harness out very efficiently or effectively past the tank. So drop the tank, he says. These are handy dandy transmission jack to support it because who knows how much fuel is in it or who knows how long ago, because the license plates were gone. So we don't know how long this thing's been sitting. So now would be a good time to get that nasty fuel out. Maybe it would've been smart to do this when the drive shaft was out. We don't know if that's smart around here though. So we got our fuel filler neck and vent hoses unhooked. We got our brackets taken loose. Now we just gotta get a ground wire disconnected. Should just be a 13 millimeter head bolt up there or an M6, I believe. I already got the weather pack disconnected for the fuel pump. And then we gotta uh, disconnect our fuel hoses and this thing will be ready to come down. All right, now that we got our tank out, we'll clean up the top of this thing so that when we pull the fuel pump and sending unit out that we don't drop a bunch of crap in there. And then we'll uh, properly dispose of that fuel, put it into something that we know will burn it. And then since we know that thing had a good fuel pump and it's gonna work with our harness and all that stuff, we'll take that fuel pump out of the 95, put it in the 90 tank, provided it's all the same, same depth and all that. I don't know, GM was pretty crazy in these pickups. They had a lot of different fuel tanks. There was two wheel drive, four wheel drive, big block, small block, V6, extended cab, crew cab, regular cab, long bed, short bed, a lot of combinations, but hopefully they use the same. Bed. You don't say. All right, now I'm gonna pull that wire harness out. It should uh, have all the tail light stuff in it and the fuel pump stuff in it. And I think that's it. But it's gonna run all the way from up there. That's the boot for our steering column. But it's gonna run all the way from the firewall all the way to the taillights. And there should be a connector back there. And there's that bulkhead connector at the firewall up there. And hopefully we can uh, eliminate some of these rat's nests. And all these scotch clips. And look at all those chickens. Yuck. Old taillight fuel pump harness is out, new one is in. So now let's swap this fuel pump and then we'll be ready to stick the tank in there. Everything uh, should be good. The taillight harness 
on the pickup is not in real great shape. That intermediate harness that we put in there is real good shape. The tail light harness and the other one isn't in good shape. They make these cute little connectors that you can pull the tail light from the intermediate harness apart and you put in there and then you can plug your tail light harness in because we're hillbillies apparently here and in California or wherever this truck was worked on before. So they had scotch locks in there. So our tail light harness on both of them is fudged up. So we'll pick the best of the two harnesses and probably splice it together as best we can and then get that correct T adapter that goes in the uh, connector between the intermediate and the taillight harness and then just jumpers right to our seven pin connector. The nice part about this new harness, other than the fact that it's got ABS wires in it that we aren't gonna need so it's bulkier, but it's got wires in there for our charge wire for our trailer brake and then a blue wire already in there for our uh, trailer brake on our seven pin connector. So upgrade, he's gonna be a towing machine. All right, let's uh, do some fuel pump stuff. Yay. Don't you worry about that green Freon that somehow leaked on there, Greta. How dare you. One more thing, now would be a good time to take our tank condom off. You might say, Mortsky, what's a tank condom? Well, a tank condom is this plastic protector all around the fuel tank here. And while it protects it from getting hit with rocks and other foreign objects, it also holds smaller foreign objects in there like perfectly good washers and dirt. And that debris in there will eventually rot a hole in our fuel tank. It's super, super common on the old square bodies. So now's the time to address that. So we'll take that other strap loose on that bracket that we just unbolted from the pickup. And we'll get all that stuff out of there and we'll put it all back together and cross our fingers that we don't poke a hole through any of the pinholes that are probably developing. Put some squirrel piss on that guy. Lube them up while we got it apart. But as soon as we take that strap off, we should be able to lift the tank right out of the condom. I know, I'm sure there's a better name for it, but condom it is. This son of a gun must have spent some time down in Oklahoma. A bunch of that red dirt in there. Got it all cleaned up with our super scraper. Get your super scraper at Mortsky.com. You know what else you can get at Mortsky.com? Your magnetic screwdrivers. They get real dirty when you get gasoline on them, and grease and everything else. These things are super handy for popping clips apart on electrical connectors on these fancy 90s hot rods. Keep it in your pocket. If you got a pocket tee, we're gonna have to get those at Mortsky.com. We're working on it. Flannels. You've been waiting, you've been asking, Chin's working on it. Speaking of working, I'm gonna get our fuel pump out of there. This fuel stinks, but there ain't that much of it in it, so we might just leave it in there. Or it might not. I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. In case you've never taken one of these out, it looks like this is an Airtex, so she's a replacement. Hensho in USA. Ooh, maybe we should leave it in there. You just take and hit these tabs, spin them counterclockwise. That locking ring comes out. She comes right out of there. Oh, look at this, that fuel pump sock is disintegrating. And the rubber's all swelled up for methanol. Oh, it is a Bosch pump though. Maybe we'll put that back in there. Wish I had a new sock. Christmas is just around the corner. That's right, Mama Morsky, get me some new socks. Those are the best, best present ever. Remember when you used to hate getting socks as a kid? And you reach that age in your life where all you want for Christmas is new socks. Oh, that sock just fell into the fuel tank. Will we be able to fish it out of there? That's the next question. Yeah, there ain't much gas in there. It does stink though. That ain't gonna reach. It's during my life. Motor, somebody built this nice 55 gallon drum with some handles on it as a nice drain pan. Tip it into that, see if we can get a bunch of that crap out of there. Give her the old shimmy shimmy shake. Shake it like a boom in my picture. Alright, that's all we're doing. Oh, we got the sock though. We got the dirty, nasty, under the bed sock. All right, we had to run the furnace this morning because it's below freezing here now. 
super excited about that. So that's gonna go on our fuel oil burner and give us some heat. Expensive heat. If I spill it on myself. Our replacement pump looks very similar, but it's got a nice sock on it. So let's drop that in. Depth, offset, all that stuff looks the same. I think it would have actually just plug and played the other one. It would have been fine. But like I said, we know this one's the right pressure for the engine. And we know it was working good enough to roll the truck over. And it looks newish. Which doesn't mean much these days, unfortunately. We'll definitely hang on to the old Bosch. All right, I think we're ready to slide a tank back in there. Fuel tank's reinstalled. Remind me to put fuel in it before we try to crank this thing over because when it doesn't start, that's gonna be an issue. I think we can uh, go up and figure out the hole for the steering column and then we can hook up our wiring for the fuel pump and uh, go to our dash and put a belt on it and whatever else. So let's do that. Let's get her back on the ground. Hopefully we don't have to lift her up and down too many more times. I can't believe it had a spare tire underneath it. And it had air in it. That's pretty rare. Spare tire there. Pretty rare. I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay. I just may. What do you say? All right, fresh day, fresh start. Let's throw a fresh battery in this thing. Who's our battery sponsor this week? Lizard Larry. You too can be a battery sponsor at Mortski.com. You uh, think this thing's going to light right off, Duff? It's got gas in it. It's got oil. What are you sniffing down there? Oh. That is one thing the OBSs could use some improvement on the old uh, battery cable ends. Leave a little bit to be desired. Because you got one cable going to the starter, and then this one runs across and goes to the ECU, and they both got to have power. And on a side post battery, you got to somehow make connection between the two. Somebody. Pinched it with some AC cooler hoses, maybe. All right, I'm gonna reroute that. I'm gonna find a positive battery cable. It's like somebody mashed that in HVAC stuff too. Weird. All right, since our OEM hardware for our side post battery is missing, I'm gonna go round up three ace bolt. Must have power to the ignition switch. All right, let's go turn the key off and the blower motor off. Doors open, so we got to listen to the horrendous door buzzer. The jam nut is too thick, so I'm gonna go find a thinner jam nut or some washers. There we go. All right, here we go. Two weeks of screwing around. Let's see if we get this thing started. One thing I don't know if anybody talks about, the door definitely mashes into the dash, so we're gonna have to find some door panels off of a newer pickup or modify these door panels because I feel like that's gonna not last very long. You gonna turn the key? You gonna say slingshot engage? Well, you think it's going to rip right off? We're going to go for an RID. Well, we're going to need exhaust and a seat. We should put a gauge cluster in, but here we go. It's nothing. Sounds like we got a bad connection. 
and that's annoying. You want to check for a bad connection on the battery? That'd be great. Ground's tight on her engine. All right, let's try her again. This is where the real fun happens. All the things you get to try and troubleshoot that you screwed up in the assembly process. Come on, baby. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Connection on the starter. Okay, we'll check that one too. Everything looks nice and tight on her undercarriage down here, so we're gonna hook up a loser switch. See if that makes a difference. Surely this engine can be seized up. Did we pressure wash this? Is it full of water in the cylinders? That might be. Sure sounds like a bad connection. Here we go. Or is it a bad starter? Oh, let's pull some spark plugs, I guess. Great, grand, wonderful. Good, great, grand, wonderful. Locked up our own engine. It's probably not what it is, but I don't know what else it could be. Well, I guess I'll pull some spark plugs out. Driver's side looks easy. Passenger side, not so much. Would have been way easier when we had the engine out. Would be a good time to put new ones in if we had some too. Good news is spark plugs all look good. Bad news is none of them look overly wet. So uh, let's crank it over. I'll leave the camera underneath the hood, so if something shoots out, maybe you folks will see it. I could use the loser switch and see it, but I'd probably get sprayed in the face, so I'll do it from the safety of the cab. Well, as you can tell, that didn't work, so I guess I'll go pull that inspection cover and we'll put El Jefe on the flex plate and see if we can't turn it by hand. Maybe we just got a bad start or something. Good thing is we got a lot of experience dealing with crappy starters and stuck engines. I don't get how this thing can be stuck. Though. All right, let's pull an inspection cover. Ow. All right, let's put El Jefe on here. I did not hear this thing run, so taking scrap guy's word for it. stuck. That's good. Can we fill our starter with water? Lose your switch. That starter doesn't sound so hot. Should be spinning faster, shouldn't it? And it's also not engaging or disengaging. The old Bendix is Stuck engaging the teeth on the uh, ring gear, so not what you want. Oh, don't stick your light to something that turns. Case in point, the torque converter. All right, let's uh, take a look at that starter and see what we got. I'm gonna unhook the battery cable first so I don't burn the shop down. Gonna show them what we found. So, this is the one off that 454. This is the one off the TBI we just pulled off. Same part number, Delco Remy 25485. So nice work, GM. Same starter on a 454 and a 5.7 350. They both sound just like that. So I think the starters are good. What else could it be? Test of the battery. That's good. Just keep messing around with battery cables and connections. <sighs> starters, the bane of my existence. But you're so supportive. Such a supportive pumper duffers. Be even more supportive if you'd put this back on for me. And then uh, find the bad connection. That'd be great. 
Ah, oh, man, I feel like an idiot. Story of my day, like Shania Twain says. Man, I feel like an idiot. Where am I, is my light? Here it is. All right, I was talking about GM's super poor design, about putting two battery cables together. Oh, I was just gonna check that connection on this. So this goes over the, whatever, not the ECU, the fuse center, and I had this on the outside, and then I just snug the bolt up against this one, because you know, there's a nice clean, area for it to contact right there but on this back side it was pretty much this rubber hitting so that was our problem i'm an idiot so i'll put a washer between this and whatever it's connecting to and it should be good it would save me a whole lot of mess around if i had just checked that first so i think what we're gonna do is put our bolt out here and our washer there and this inside cable here. And then we just snug that up. And you got yourself a much better battery connection. Comment down below if you know a good way to fix these things. The problem is most of these things have been messed with over the years, so there's not a good way to go back to stock because they've been hacked up but like I said not a great design by GM but I am positive positive you get it dad jokes <laughs> that's Holy a knee slapper but that was our issue the entire time it was just making enough connection to make it click and then enough connection to just barely turn it over yeah that's gonna fix it positivity Did that fix the exposed duffers see what happens What the French? <sighs> All right, back to the drawing boards. I still think it's gotta be in that positive connection up there. We're staying positive. Maybe not Duff or Mojo. Well, many minutes later, we finally figured it out. And what do I always say? It's always the ground. I thought it's hooked up to the intake manifold bolt. That's where it was from the factory. It should be good. There's a ground going to the body, which shouldn't really matter. But check this out. Duff wants a hug first. You want a hug? You feel bad for me because I'm an idiot? Yeah, good deal. I appreciate that about you. That's what I appreciate about you. It's always the ground. Always. Here's the beauty of these dual terminal DT78 interstate batteries, like this nice one that Lizard Larry sponsored us with. You can have two grounds or two powers. So I eliminated the power deal by putting an adapter from a top post to a side post for this one going to the starter. That didn't fix it. So then I went and grabbed a new battery cable and grounded it to the exhaust stud. Like so. And who'd have thunk? Check this out. Don't worry that it sounds funny because there's no spark plugs in it. So now I get to fix the ground, put the inspection cover back in, spark plugs back in it and all that stuff. And I'm sure there's gonna be other electrical nightmares because this has got that park interlock where you gotta push the brake to get the uh, shifter out of park. It don't come out of park, so that's not working. And we don't have any lights on the rear. So that's great. Maybe you just didn't hook up the connector. Or maybe there's a bad ground going to the bed. I don't know, but the headlights work. So that's a win. And the engine cranks over now. So another win. Let's keep winning away today. I'll be back in a minute after I fix all those silly things that I just took apart for no reason. For the sake of sanity. And guess what? We could have just cut all this stuff out of there and been like, oh, look, it started, but nope. We're keeping it real here. More to repair. The real hack channel. No, that's DD Hack Shop. The real, the real, real channel. Yeah. Spark plugs are back in it, so let's see if she cranks over and maybe even fires. Let's just, yeah, let's hope it fires, but let's just hope it at least cranks with spark plugs in it because we haven't had to do that yet. Well, it cranks, so that's a win. I'm gonna try to figure out why the fuel pump ain't running. Cycle the key, listen inside the tank. No fuel pump, so that's gonna be a problem. Let me show you why I have trust issues. So uh, we took a old worn out Bosch pump out of this tank and put a significantly 
newer and better looking something or other. Well, I had power at the harness up front, dropped it down, hooked up my uh, power probe to the fuel pump, no pumpy pump. So that, well, maybe that connector came loose in there. I double checked on my old pump, what the wiring should be, hooked my uh, power probe to that and it ran fine. So I thought, well, maybe the wire came loose or something. Long story short, this guy has since seized up, left the chat. So we're gonna drop the old Bosch in there and uh, we're gonna have to steal the sock and the rubber off of that one because it's all deteriorated on that one. Or maybe we'll just take the Bosch pump and uh, slip it into that sending unit. Anyway, we'll figure something out. We gotta do some swapping. So if you take and hook your ground up to that ground strap and you hook a power up to the gray wire, it runs. Let me show you. This one doesn't do any of the above. So we're doing this again. Great. And don't tell me I should have tested that pump when I had it out because who would do such a thing, you know? Like the pickup was running where it rolled over. The uh, scrap guy cut a hole in the tank, drained all the fuel out. He said it was running at his place in April. So six months later, doesn't work anymore. Great. Hopefully snowbirds don't leave their cars sit for six months in Florida while they're up here or vice versa. Hope they're gonna start with this quality of gas and new parts these days. All right, rant over on parts quality. Where's the Tylenol? Well, there goes another half hour, which should have been an easy swap. Was not. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it, Duff says. So, look at the bottoms of these two fuel pumps. See how they're significantly different? Well, that's where that sock attaches. And this style sock that came off this aftermarket pump does not fit the style, which is what the Bosch is. I got one all together. I saved this one out of uh, the Oklahoma Lullaby. By the way, that pickup is sold. I think this one, the sending unit didn't work, but the pump was good. So of course I saved it. And now it's just a pump without a sock and it's got a bad sending unit. But anyway, we got one that we can put together now. I just tested it. It works. It's going to work when we get it in there, right? Yeah, it's raining out. Duff got a little wet, a little down. A little down, aren't you? Because it washed all your stinky smells off you. All right, I'm going to put this tank in one last time. Hopefully. Ugh, never mind. You still stink. Now you stink like wet dog. Who's the stinky wet dog? Duffers is. Duffers is. All right. Killing me, Smalls. Kill me. Killing me, Smalls? Aftermarket parts suck. And they don't interchange. Good thing I keep all my garbage. Don't throw nothing away. That's what Grandpa said, right? Yeah. The fuel system saga continues. I was smart. I checked the sending unit. No work. So we stole the sending unit off the other one. It's screwed on. This one, riveted on. So we're going to drill out the rivets, tap some holes, and hopefully have a good fuel sending unit pumps out. Good times. Should have just bought a new one. Perfect. Hole spacing was even the same. Fantastic. I did put some 8-32 bolts in there. I don't know what was in there before, but the ones that we took off of this sending unit were too small. This is what happens when other people help you out in the shop. This is a new drill bit set. We're already missing five drill bits out of it. Thanks, Chin and Mojo. Now I'm gonna test everything one more time and then we're gonna throw it back together. For some reason, I could not get the fuel tank out with the drive shaft in this time, so I don't know what the deal was last time. Anyway, while well, the drive shaft out needs a pinion seal, and uh, GM and all their infinite knowledge offers multiple differentials, so I figured now would be a good time to see what pinion seal is in there. So we checked it out and uh, ran the numbers, and it looks like it's a 2043 national number. Sure enough, had one on hand, so we're going to replace that quick while well, we get the drive shaft out. She was leaking. Pretty good. Come on, baby. 
There we go. Good news is there's oil in it. Bad news is spider gear's got a little wear. The opinion had a couple of duggas and we're ready to put a drive shaft back in it. A little sloppy in the old uh, spider gears. Good enough for the girls we go with. Let's throw a drive shaft back in her. Fuel tank's in. Let's turn the key on. See if we can hear the pump run. I can hear it. You see any leaks? I don't see any. Well, should we give her a crank, see what happens? Let's see what happens. Think it's gonna go? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he says. Got it right. Oh. <laughs> what? Boom, I said. <laughs> Nothing else happened, huh? Wow. You said it was gonna run. Well. No. What did I tell you? Ready? Ran until it didn't. Yep. Sounds like it needs exhaust. Yeah. How are you missing that? Eh? Yeah. I'm surprised there's no vacuum leaks. How could there be a miss? Vacuum leak? Well, we're gonna have to round up some exhaust. We also gotta top off the transmission and coolant, and then we gotta figure out why it won't come out of gear. It's got that brake interlock dealio, and uh, it's not wanting to <coughs> uninterlock. So, I don't know if we got a bad brake switch, or no power to it, or no power coming from it, or forgot a connector, or what. Should be fun. We also got no tail lights or brake lights, anything back here, so that might be part of it. It's got good oil pressure, so that's good. Well, it's, uh, it's about sandwich 30, so we're gonna wrap her up for the evening here. But before we do, Duff, uh, we're into the old shop and grabbed some goodies out of the old junk pile. We got some factory saw blade wheels. I got five of them, so we're gonna clean them up, pick the best three and a half and uh also in the scrap pile we had some exhaust and i think this is off the old confederado i think somebody else got the other half of that well here's part of it anyway that was a 98 extended cab and then this glass pack setup i think there's two of them i think that's off of like a 88 to 94 GMC regular cab long bed so we should be able to shorten this just a little bit and uh, put that on there hopefully that is if my memory is correct but that's what that's off of and that was man that was the start of YouTube days four years ago so I don't know this stuff was actually meant to be thrown away but we just never got it hauled away because there's no weight to it and the uh, scrap guys didn't want it and it's big and bulky and well, maybe we'll put it to work just kidding we'll get mad at it and throw it back in the weeds and there will sit until next time but uh exhaust job is about a thousand bucks so if we can save ourselves a thousand bucks by putting this on there that'll be great oh that should tell us if it was off that pickup if it's got an oxygen sensor do you got to have an oxygen sensor i feel like you do on a tbi it would not surprise me if the Confederado did not have an oxygen sensor. I don't see one in that pipe. How about the other side? I don't see any in that thing either. Oh yeah, found the uh, intermediate tail light harness off the old Confederado too. I was hoping it was the tail light harness, but it is not. So, yeah, I guess we can add an oxygen sensor. All right. We got something to do tomorrow. Pressure wash and uh, fit exhaust. Well, would you believe it? The exhaust is at different angles that I thought. Maybe the manifolds are different. I don't know. Anyway, I got to pick up back here. It's uh, another TBI and it's uh, got a bad engine. So 
Should have good exhaust. I think I talked about it earlier. Well, anyway, regular cab, long bed, so we should be able to shorten it up. So yeah, let's uh, get the telehandler and scoot that thing inside. Right, Duff? Right. All right, last night I stuck around late and got that thing topped off with coolant and ATF, so let's see if we can't drive it out of the shop. No, no rides. Hopefully it moves though. No seat. I also started picking up junk and filled up the back with mostly extra parts. I don't think we need any of that stuff. Well, before I take the lift arms out, let's see if it starts and moves on its own today. I didn't try moving it yet. Fire. I'm sure it's fine. It'll come out of it with exhaust. I'm hoping it's just the oxygen sensor missing. So what is this thing? This thing is a 93 regular cab, four wheel drive, a long bed. This thing's pretty much been around here its whole life. I knew the last two owners, I don't know, I could probably, the last three owners actually. I don't know where it come from before that, but it's a, it's a sharp, well, with that big stripe, it's almost a tritone. It was a nice pickup in its day. And uh, yeah, they said the engine went out. I'd bought the seat out of eight years ago. I know the guy who got the heater controls and then they were cleaning out the yard and selling it. So then I uh, came and got it, but look at this. Nelson Chevrolet and Milner. The old uh, screw on chrome advertising. That's uh, something you don't see anymore. It's rusty in the fenders. It's got rotten cab corners. Super bad over the wheel wells. Look at how nice the bed floor is though. I think they kept the tailgate but yeah, would have been a lot easier to just put an engine in that. But that's not what we're here for. Easy. Let's get this thing lifted up in the air and steal the exhaust. Might have to steal that. Nice bug deflector up there too. Really old man it up. And the uh, grill guard. Just kidding, those things are hideous. Does ours have tow hooks? We might have to steal the valance and the tow hooks. That's why we got them donors super nice interior in this thing well it was it's red though and it's the old style stuff gross dang it the headliner is even presentable what a deal power windows power locks she's loaded up somebody put a cd player in her nothing but the finest Old silverado sure enough the other pickups got that stuff so we don't have to worry about stealing the valance or the hooks unless that one's in worse shape it's got a good axle boot but if I'm gonna go through all that work, I think I'm gonna put a new wheel bearing in and uh, a new axle boot, and not have to take two pickups apart. So, new part situation. I didn't see an oxygen sensor down here on these early ones. It's in the manifold, so we might have to steal the manifold so that this Y pipe mates up. And I don't know if we can use that oxygen sensor or not, but we can weld the bung in. Mainly we're stealing the crossover pipe. I'll show you why. This uh, bread loaf looking muffler thingy might go away. That pipe is uh, rusted out. It's got a glass back, which I hate glass backs. And there's no tailpipe. So yeah, pretty much just stealing the crossover out of this. And I think people give money for these. So, you know, I'll throw that on the shelf. So let's do that. All right, got the taillight harness out, got the spare tire off in case we need it for a roller, even though it's flat. I uh, got the exhaust off it, stole a bracket for the uh, rear brake hose. Let's kick old Clint, Kipe, Zach, 
out of here. Those are the last three owners that I'm aware of of this thing. I did not take the manifolds off it because we're gonna see if the other ones are the same. And uh, if they're different, I probably got a set of these manifolds that are already off something instead of hanging underneath the hood and stealing these off of there. And we'll make it harder for the mice to get in there. We'll make them have to climb uphill instead of horizontally. Freaking mice, the bane of my existence. All right, here we go, moment of truth. I got a feeling that these are different. Just got a feeling. What? I think we're golden, kids. Oh, we locked out. I think, I think. We're gonna have to put some new donuts in there. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that'll work. All right, we're back on the OBS. Uh, a couple days later, we had some Short wide bed uh, shenanigans in a square body style. So go check that video out if you haven't. Oh, that looks real bad. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that ain't supposed to be like that? There's gonna be a hole in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what is happening? You Hashtag free Mortski. Anyway, while I was gone, well actually before I left, I mounted these tires up. Check these things out, this thing looks way good. 285, 75, 16, Mudder Trucker Hangovers. The name on these has gotten out of control. These wheels didn't clean up as well as I wanted, but that was just pressure washing. We can scrub them. I threw the balance beads in there because the first one needed like six and a half ounces of weight. So uh, we're just gonna try the beads for now. While I was gone, the boys uh, threw some carpet in it and they put the tail light harness in it that I got out of another pickup mojo. Started wiring in the trailer socket and also forgot his light in there. Who knows how long that's, but this thing has seen some unspeakable things. He also pulled down the spare tire receiver thing and doctored that. What the gravy is going on up here? For cheese and rice, kids, I have. No idea what that man is thinking. He needs a thorough talking to because uh, we got the right harness that just plugs into here on another pick. Uh, we got all the lights working. The bulb on this left side looked good. Uh, DB was helping me. He goes, the bulb looks good. I said, put a new bulb in it. Put a new bulb in it. It lit up. And he goes, huh. And I'm like, yeah, just because it looks good doesn't mean it works. Anyway, all the lights were working. Took us a while to figure out why the brake lights wouldn't work. Remember how I thought it had a bad switch? I threw a new switch in it, still didn't work. Turns out the very end of the uh, brake rod is different between a 90 and a 95 figure, so we had to swap the whole brake booster. And now brake lights work great, the park interlock works great, so DB did all the work there. I troubleshot it and said, go take the one out of that pickup, which was super easy because the dash is out. This one was a little bit more work, but anyway, brake lights are working. We gotta get some exhaust on this thing so we can get an O2 sensor and hopefully that clears up how it runs. So it looks good now with the wheels. Now we gotta make it sound good and drive good. We gotta get a seat in it as well. And like I said, they got the carpet in, I got a bolt in the column, but anyway, we got her up in the air here. And uh, I'm gonna bolt the exhaust up. I got some new donuts. Speaking of that, I got a whole bunch of new parts. Wipers, serpentine belt, radiator hoses, four new shocks, three new brake hoses, fuel filter, oxygen sensor, door pins, and exhaust gaskets. So this thing's gonna be cooned up real solid. Let's uh, throw some exhaust donuts in it, get that Y pipe up there clamped in place so we can uh, start figuring out some exhaust. I'll be exhausted by the end of this. <laughs> Here's the donuts the 95 requires. It's like a regular donut on this side, and then this side is flat, and it's got this little retainer that slides up into the manifold. Hopefully I got the right ones. Oh yeah, it fits up in there. It doesn't stay up in there, but it should seal. Just kidding, first thing we're gonna knock this adapter pipe off of the crossover. Sounds good? Sounds good. It appears. 
appears as we've got a leak from our transfer case. Maybe it's just overfilled. Yeah, we should probably address that. Ugh, it's leaking between the case halves or sections. Perfect. Guess we'll have to uh, run that out of oil and never. What the heck is going on up there? Who clamped that joint in place? For cheese and rice. I guess we're gonna need to fix that. Ah, the joys of working on old junk and swapping everything over. Um, I was gonna hang up the back part of the exhaust and uh, try to make an adapter in between, but uh, that front drive shaft clearly needs addressing, so let's at least get it out of there so it doesn't spin and break off the back of the transmission. I don't know if it's the wrong U-joint. It shouldn't be. I can't remember what shaft we used. I think it's the same shaft. Maybe not. I don't know. But it should be the right size, but obviously you can tell all the needles are falling out, so. Worst case scenario, we gotta put a bastard joint in. <laughs> Since we're that far, do we pull the transfer gaze out and reseal that? Nah, we're running it. So the 95 have these pin style rubber mounts. The 90 has these flat style rubber mounts. So in all my uh, thinking, geniosity, brilliance, I thought this stuff will just interchange. Just unbolt that, bolt that in there now. It's different bolt patterns. So the saga continues. I'll play around with this a little bit and uh, I'll let you know what I figure out. Worst case scenario, I guess we just gotta use the old style mounts or drill new holes or something. Should be fun. I'm already exhausted and I'm not even exhausted yet. Well, I took some of that uh, pent up aggression on the adapter pipes between the muffler and the front there. I got the muffler set in place. The bolt pattern on that hook is the same. This front one would have been too low and the holes didn't line up. So I'm gonna see if I can't make a pipe that goes from there to there. And uh, hopefully I can make that mutilation seal up again. If not, I gotta find the exact same muffler. So that should be great. And this is obviously modified and we need a tailpipe so we can change some orientation on that a little bit if we need to. But we're gonna just try to get from there to here. See what happens. Wish me luck. All right, you guys know I've been looking for an exhaust pipe bender machine for quite a while and I missed a lot of machines and everything was overpriced. And so I bit the bullet, ponied up, spent a little bit more, got a brand new uh, bend pack here. And so I spent like the last hour trying to figure out how to flare a pipe. There's a couple of different options that we got with the dies, but anyway, a uh, huge shout out to the folks at uh, Bend Pack. I reached out to them, they gave me a discount. This thing was by no means free, but I paid a little bit more than what uh, well-used machines were going for to get a brand new one with warranty and all the dyes and all the good stuff. So as much exhaust as we do around here, this thing should last forever. And it's gonna take a while to pay for itself. And we're probably still gonna send stuff to Boom too. But the main thing I wanted this thing for, unfortunately, was expanding pipes. So I think I finally got this thing figured out. So we got what we're gonna call like a bullet die and a clamp here. And this should just push it and expand it. it should be great. And then they got these uh, expansion style dies that go on the other end. That's what boom tubes got. And uh, those aren't as clean. Not only are they greasy, but the expansions aren't as clean. But these things look like they should be super clean. So uh, let's give it a whirl. See what we can screw up. What's the worst thing that happens? I ruin a chunk of pipe or my fingers or wreck this whole machine. Who knows? Let's give her a whirl. So we mark this pipe three inches in. This is three inch pipe. We're gonna expand it so that it slides over some three inch pipe. And then I'm wind that three inch mark up. It says a minimum of three inches, so we'll go a little bit past. 
and we slide this back. I'm gonna turn her on. We're gonna push that bullet in there. It should expand it. I did clean this out a little bit with a file, so we'll see. I feel like this takes more hands than what I got. I also feel like that die is facing the wrong way. It's not one to grab the pipe. It says the short edge, and I'm like, what's the short edge? There, she's grabbing it. Just kidding, it's not. It's definitely not. Right. Gonna pull back on it first, or what the heck? There, she's slipping in. Like I said, there's gonna be a learning curve here. It says to not press that in all the way. You wanna leave some room out there, apparently, I guess. Now, how do we get our pipe back off there? All right, I don't like it already. I think we can take this off. How do we get this on there? Spin this around. It's got teeth in it that should grab. So, spin that back in. Maybe. What's your problem? All right. Like I said, big learning curve. Hey, we got her undid. I can't imagine because everything is new. Once she gets all slopped out, it should work better. But look at that nice flare. Let's go see if it works. Although it did kind of push out on this side, and it's flatter on this side. So I don't know what that's all about. But it shouldn't matter. You uh, break it in that driver's seat? Or is it the passenger seat? Anyway, Duff's been camping out on that. All right, that was a really expensive flare right there because it's the first one we did. See if it fits. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah, I like a glove. He like a glove. Oh, oh. the machine's gonna be so nice. So nice. Whew. Look at that. Now we just gotta put a clamp on there and that'll be good to go. I'm a fan of exhaust clamps. There's band clamps are my favorite, but those regular old cheesy clamps are okay, but they kink the pipe. But I don't like people who weld exhaust because then if you ever got to take it apart, it doesn't happen. Unless you got like stainless or something and then it's all cool and you polish it. But now we got to figure out how to do something with this because this is not a three inch muffler. So we're going to have to uh, expand some two and three quarter up to three inch and then slip it in there. We'll figure it out. We'll do some playing around. We're having fun. I left her a little bit long. Let's see what happens. I do think I'm gonna cut what's left on this thing off and just weld a new piece of pipe on there once we get that to the right size, of course. And then we'll uh, flare that up. And... You know what I'm saying? We're gonna make it better. We're gonna make this muffler not look like an ax murderer removed it. <laughs> All right, so I need some two and three quarter pipe. I don't know if they even make it. They probably do, but all I got is two and a half and then it goes right up to three inch. So we need to expand this to go over the three inch and then expand it a little bit to go inside that like two and three quarter on the muffler. So we're gonna find out if you can expand the two and a half up to three inch. I think I already know the answer, but we'll see what it looks like when we do. Duff says, put some grease on that die before we do it. Okay. Also, we gotta put the two and a half inch uh, clamp in there. Time to do some sketchy stuff. Do da, do da. Oh boy, this thing's, this thing's gonna be angry. It's not gonna work. There is just no chance that's gonna work. Really wish I had some uh, two and three quarter stuff right about meow. All right. Let's go over to this side and put our mandrel on here for two and a half and expand this up and see what we can do. All right, let's give this thing a whirl. Here goes nothing. I 
guess we gotta turn this off. There we go. How far out does that thing go? No idea what we're doing here. But you were aware of that. Further than that. Oh, I think you gotta go out until these two lines line up, maybe? Let's see what that does. Then you gotta spin it, because obviously it expands, there's voids in there. I'm gonna go see how that fits inside of our muffler. She's still a little sloppy, we'll give her a bit more. So we gotta turn this out. And the other end, same diameter, actually a little bit less. There, that fits nice. So I'm going to label that end muffler. And we're gonna expand this end a little bit more so it goes inside that three inch. How far out does this go? Oh, long ways. Way out there. Let's see if we can get this to go over that three inch. over to the bullet, see if we can expand that to 3 inch, see if we ruin a 7 inch chunk of pipe. Probably. Here goes nothing. No way! This is the greatest thing ever! This is great! I'm gonna be playing with this thing all. We're just waiting till I figure out how to bend things. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look terrible. All right, this might be my new favorite toy. So, this should fit nice and tight in that muffler, and we can either weld it or clamp it. When the ax murderer beat the crap out of it, they may have cracked that out, so I think we'll just weld that and we'll sacrifice that pipe. If we're gonna buy a muffler, we're gonna buy a three inch muffler and uh, do her upright. And then this should slide over our extension pipe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she'll go. It's gonna be close, but we'll get her. Just gotta clean up the inside a bit. <sighs> so much fun. May have found my new calling because I hate terrible exhaust. Oh yeah, slides right over. So if the exhaust goes from left to right, you want this pipe to be inside of this pipe, and this pipe to be inside of that pipe. 
and so on and so forth. If you go over the top, it's gonna catch on that lip on the inside and the exhaust is gonna wanna come out. So here, if it's gonna come out, it's gotta go past this seal and then back that way. Or if you're over, it's just gonna blow right through. So, get what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. We might have to shorten this up a bit with this extension in there, but not a big deal because we still gotta put our oxygen sensor in here. So I think I gotta find a bung and weld in there. We're gonna do all that welding on the floor because that's what a good exhaust guy would do. This thing is great. Everybody needs an exhaust bender. They're almost as great as tow trucks. All right, since uh, Scrap Guy cut the oxygen sensor pipe out, we gotta put an oxygen sensor in there. Thing with oxygen sensors, you can buy these bungs and they're all pretty much the same thread. But you gotta have it horizontal or above horizontal. You don't want it at the bottom of the pipe because then all the humiditation sits there and ruins your oxygen sensor and gives you crappy readings or something. So we're gonna put it in the side of the pipe. So we got one of these generic bungs probably from Amazon or eBay. Got a step bit, we're gonna drill a hole. Got our mark where it needs to be. And uh, yeah, it's burning in there. This thing's got a sweet little radius on the edge. So you just line that up with the radius in your pipe and we burn in there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. reason I had these things around, they're super handy for putting, uh, a, what are the AFR? Air fuel ratio bungs in your vehicle. Uh, not that I have an air fuel ratio meter on anything, but I planned on it. One day I will. And you're gonna need these bungs to do it. It's a good way to tune carburetors, apparently, because that's how your computer tunes your fuel injection, so. The more you know. All right, a little update. You got the muffler in place. I had to cut the clamp off the little dump tailpipe they had. I couldn't expand it big enough to get it on there and I had to take it off of the muffler to uh, rotate the muffler so that it sat the way that I wanted it to sit so it tucks up nice and high for all that ground clearance in case we lower it, you know? So uh, I'm gonna make a new pipe. I'm gonna have to expand it to fit in there. We're just gonna dump it for now. Long term, we're gonna get a three inch muffler and we're gonna run a three inch tailpipe, but I'm not gonna make a tailpipe out of three inch and reduce it down and have a bunch of adapters. And this thing's fun to play with and I wanna make a tailpipe, but uh, not today, not till we get the right muffler. We're gonna do it, we'll do it right. Yeah, right, it's probably gonna be like this forever. Anyway, I'm gonna make a quick little uh, turn down and expand it and yeah, we'll get to use the bender if we make a turn down. It's gonna be fun, stay tuned. No idea what I'm doing here, but we're gonna try to put a 45 degree bend in the end of this sucker. And I want it right about there where X marks the spot. This thing's got a angle gauge on the front, diangle, and it's still at, oh well, that's one degree? There we go. There's 20 degrees. Maybe I don't want 45 degrees. There's 25 degrees. Let's try that. The first bend. So excited. I'm going to put this on the fridge. Oh, look what I did to the end of the pipe. Because I probably had it too close to the end. Alright. Let's uh, put a little bit more in it. Her up real good. I'm guessing uh, I should have left it longer and then cut it off. It's gonna work. Like I said, it's it's temporary. My first bend is a failure. Imagine that. God, that really sucks. Oh well. We're gonna have to. Uh, Read the instructions better. Okay, let's go put this on there. We're gonna have to get Mojo trained. He's, he's kind of a hack at some of these things, but he's, he figures things out. But then we'll do uh, mufflers by Mojo.
gonna expand this just a smidge so it fits in that muffler better. All right, folks, check it out. The first muffler by Morski, and it's a used muffler nonetheless. I rebent this. Oh, of course I got it at an angle there, but it ain't too bad because I couldn't deal with the way that it was. And of course we have to dump it right on the rear end like any good exhaust guy would. But well, like I said, she's just temporary. I did have to take this J hook, whatever it is, and cut and spin it the other way so that it's hanging nice and vertical. It's vertical in this direction. It's also vertical in this direction. I expanded it too far to fit inside, so then I just expanded this tailpipe far enough to go over the muffler, put a clamp on there. We got our little adapter here with a clamp there. We got our oxygen sensor and bung all installed. And we also got a clamp up here. So she's uh, way better than it has been for quite a while, but we need to get a three inch muffler and then we'll bend up a tailpipe. Probably have to add another hanger back there, obviously. And they all had a hanger right here. I don't know how that it worked because this hanger is lower than the exhaust and I've never seen a hanger that pushes up on the exhaust, but anywho, we'll worry about that at another time. She's pretty solid. Good enough for the girls we go with. Stuck some brand new Precision 534G universal joints in that front drive shaft. Also got skid plate buttoned back up. I did notice that the uh, pitman arm and the idler are a little bit loose. So we should probably order some of those and we'll grease all that. But I also fired it up and uh, there's that pinhole in the exhaust and it sounds better than it did before, but it's still got that miss or a tick or something. It almost sounds like a valve. It just flutters once in a while. I'm gonna try the easy thing. I'm gonna pull the spark plugs out. All the ignition stuff look good uh, as far as distributor cap rotor wires all that stuff so i don't know maybe maybe when it got tipped over something hit a plug or a plug got wet or who knows but that's the first thing we're gonna try spark plugs i got some brand new delco cr43 tsm just ts's new old stock something we had laying around so that's the number it calls out for let's put them in i don't know where duff went he's overworking on the furnace yeah it's furnace season great you guys know how to do spark plugs, seen me do it a million times, done it a million times, so I'll show you what I find. All right, we've got spark plugs in, but before we try to fire it up, let's take a look at the old ones. They were a little bit oily and uh, fuely. I don't know if that was between the rollover and from sitting, from wiring issues, from not having an oxygen sensor, I don't know. I mean, nothing crazy, but not too bad. But check this thing out. We got ourselves a spark plug. Tester, yeah. So I don't know, there was a Instagram reel and I saw and I was like, oh, I need one of those. I accidentally ordered two. So anybody that orders a shirt or a sweatshirt with the dates listed below, we're gonna, somebody's gonna get a spark plug tester, brand new one, because I ordered two and I don't need two. But anyway, we got the uh, super soft embroidered sweatshirts. These things are uh, on closeout, they're on sale because we gotta make room for the even softer printed front and rear upgrade. These ones don't have it on the back. So anyway, go get your uh, sweatshirt, mortski.com. And like I said, somebody who orders either a t-shirt or sweatshirts can get uh, a fancy ignition tester. All right, let's take a look at these spark plugs. Gee, we're in Christmas, you're gonna claw my eyes out, dog. I know, you want a sweatshirt too, but you, you don't have thumbs. This thing, not a paid promotion, Ansel, spark plug tester. So it's got this power switch and then you can crank the RPMs from 500 up to 6,000. This one was like the best looking plug, but it's got the worst looking spark. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but yeah, oh, yeah you guys can see that. Anyway, some of them looked uh, pretty oily and they look really fuely. I'm guessing that's part of just sitting here idling, but yeah, that one's got some deposits on it. Anyway, they were due to be replaced. Oh, that's one of the used ones. That's right. I uh, thought I had new spark plugs. I had five. And the other box had used ones in it, so leave it to Morski to keep used spark plugs around. I think I might throw these away, maybe. We'll order some new ones for the next TBI. All right, let's see how this thing runs. I'm relatively confident that that'll fix it. I don't know, I, I'm not, there wasn't a, so I'm gonna see like a smash electrode or something. And they all tested fine. That uh, tester doesn't have a good or no good, it just, you have to eyeball it and you say if it's good or not, so. And I don't know anything. Uh, here goes nothing. 
I put a new fuel filter on it, so it's probably gonna take a couple cycles of the key to get fuel back up to the old throttle body. Not sounding real good. Yep, still doing it. All right, I'm gonna check the firing order. Maybe that got screwed up somehow. A bunch of these plug wires were labeled wrong before, and uh, I think we took the cap off. Pretty sure. I don't know if we we must have swapped wires around, but I think three and five were flipped around. It's funny, your answer because it did. But will it run and start better? Still doesn't sound that great. I think it's clearing up though. Seems like the timing's off. I'm gonna play with that some more. Remember me saying there was a whole bunch of new parts on this thing? I wonder if these guys weren't working on this and uh, couldn't figure out how to get it running and we're just beating on it and maybe that's when they rolled it over, but we're gonna figure out why it's running wrong. I'm gonna go through all them plug wires again. I should just relabel them. I hate writing on spark plug wires, but it's already been done. So let me do some more digging. I'll let you know. You guessed that five and seven were swapped around, so I don't even wanna try to figure out where that takes us back to, but anyway, the second through fourth banks on the driver's side were all mixed up. Let's try it again now. I did grab the distributor and try to rotate it. Felt like it was tight, so I don't think that anybody ever messed with that recently. Oh yeah. Way better, Duff says. Check the simple things first, like the firing order for dome. Glad we figured it out. Now it's got new plugs in it. I'm guessing those other plugs didn't look that good because the firing order was off, but... Well, the funny thing was the other side, the firing order was fine, still was pretty fuely. I'm sure it was from the oxygen sensor. All right, last night I ran the old uh, OBS outside, ran around the yard, emptied the bed. It overheated for some reason, so hopefully it's just low on coolant. Top radiator hose seems like it's getting pressure, so thermostat should be opening. Maybe it's the gauge. I don't know, wasn't spitting out coolant. So anyway, a break from your regular shenanigans. We got the uh, old whistle pig in here. Go check that video if you haven't. Uh, watch me hang out with putting down in Oklahoma and get arrested on the way home. But anyway, we've been driving this thing around illegally and the hood kind of dances. And I thought we could just adjust the uh, plunger that holds the hood down. Well, the 80 and newer hoods don't have that or 81 and newer. So I figured it out, I think. Here's our old latch. And here's the uh, replacement latch that I found on our square body we got from 7th Avenue Suburban. That's like the only parts rig that we got that's uh, 81 and newer in the yard. Get our uh, screw by Mortsky repair pointer here. Get yours at Mortsky.com. So as the hood comes down, it comes into here and this over centers, hooks on this latch and holds it down. Well, it's worn right in there. So you can take the hood and push it up and down and it's uh, got a lot of play. You'd have to really adjust these bump stops to get it so it had no play and then the hood would sit way higher than the fenders. So we could weld on this thing and file it down to fill it so that it holds the hood down tighter or we just go grab another one. And as you can see, this one's got, you know, a bunch of zinc plating left on it. So it's probably way better. I'm not gonna clean these up because they're like a uh, cast iron pan. Once they're seasoned, you wanna leave it. So all you gotta do is there's two bolts holding her down and then there's this cute little clip that holds the uh, hood cable in place, you definitely want to hook that before you test latch it, otherwise you're going to have a, a bad day. But anyway, this one looks like it's in better shape. I'm hoping it is. And uh, we'll throw that on there. And don't forget, we're giving this thing away, and we're giving a good pickup away. We're going to make it even greater. We're going to make this hood so every time you meet a semi, it don't dance up and look like it's coming over the windshield. So let's throw this on there and see how she uh, works. Well, that didn't work out as planned. Before anybody yells at me, yes, I tried taking these bolts loose on the front and adjusting this all the way down, but it was all the way down. Both of them were. So what we're gonna do next, take those bolts out, auger that hole out. We're gonna get her down. I did adjust the hood so it sits flush here. I don't like how big that gap is there, but I think this panel's gotta come ahead 
and then the fender's got to go back. It's pretty good on the top, and then the front of the fenders. We're uh, making her good. It was way low over here. This gap's pretty good right there. So it's better than it was. But check this out. It still goes up and down like three eighths of an inch. So we're gonna address that next. So these two bolts, the holes are slotted. So you move it up and down, but she was all the way down. Ooh, doesn't look like we got much clearance to go down any further. We go a little ways though. Let's see what it does. As far down as she can go, the mechanism hits the bottom of this bracket on the inside. So that's all we're gonna get. And yes, I did check out the pin up here and it's not all worn or bent up. So that shouldn't be the issue. And there's no adjustment on that. And that's welded to the hood. Oh yeah, a lot better now. Sitting on the bump stop over here. We can maybe adjust that up a hair. Over here, we're not quite on it, but it's better than it was. Keep messing with it. So here's the issue we're having. We're hitting down here. So maybe I'll take this one and we'll try it, take it loose and take the old uh, zip wheel and cut that bottom off there. Kind of hate to do it because it's structured the way that it's formed, but I don't see how it's going to affect it. Should be fine. Oh man, check this out. I love the uh, score body tips and tricks. Always learning. This one's a little bit high. I think it's because the way the hood is, I tried tweaking the hood, but that's literally all of the play in this thing. And this side's super tight, so way more gooder. All right, I'm gonna get Mojo out of the way. He's fixing a stove pipe. I'm gonna go to the chiropractor, get my back straightened out, you know, because things. And uh, yeah, you guys can win this thing, so uh, stay tuned. Back to your regular scheduled OBS shenanigans. No more square body stuff. Oh, before I forget, we got shirts now. We got decals and shirts. The free Mortsky decals and shirts. Uh, appreciate everybody who bought those. Uh, keep the orders coming. Go check that out, mortsky.com. Limited edition. We're only doing these things once. So, uh, yeah. Appreciate all you guys who made those orders and uh, appreciate every one of you that's watching. All right, back to the OBS. Load up. Oh, dang it. So the door doesn't shut real well. The handle's busted on the inside and the lever is busted as well. You got a little bit of interior work to do. You gotta put a headliner in it and some trim pieces, but uh, we got license and insurance, so we're good there. I put a radio in it. I'd like to put auto start in it. Cause like I said, it's going to be a winter driver. I just found out the cup holder sucks. Um, Bluetooth stereo. You gotta put the four wheel drive shift lever. Just a bunch of piddly stuff in the interior. I would highly uh, recommend not making the change to go from the 88 to 94 interior to a 95 to on up interior because it was a lot of work and we're still finding issues. You can't mix and match door panels. So we gotta find these door panels that are manual or else change the doors or convert the doors to electric and it sounds like the doors are different between 94 on down and 95 on up so the saga continues but we are fully committed at this point so uh the brakes are a little bit spongier than i like obviously we got to finish up the exhaust exhaust parts are in order when i was working on the brakes up front i found out that the uh, ball joints are shot and pitman arm and idler arm and tie rod end are shot mojo's working on the stove oh so he's over there checking to see the stove pipes emitting gas but uh anyway we got some work to do but this thing looks real good i was gonna do a walk around outside but it is super 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 windy the flag the very nice flag is uh pretty rigid wind coming out of the uh, southwest today so a little further ado let's do a test drive i checked the coolant this morning it's full top off the tranny starts right up That exhaust, huge exhaust leak, and we're not going to address that until later. I don't know if the timing's off. It doesn't seem like it runs idles that great. 
that's the problem with this stuff is there's so many bugs to work out once we get things on the road it's all the little piddly stuff like there's a license plate light out you know getting the exhaust leaks fixed getting the brakes all dialed in all that good stuff Ooh, and the old uh, mud sluts living up to their name just slinging mud everywhere come on tranny shift 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 all right Tranny's not shifting on a first. So, pretty short test drive. I guess we gotta figure out what's going on there. This is a 60E, so it's electronic. So, it's not the way we got the TV cable improperly adjusted, because this doesn't have a TV cable. The original, the, the 90 transmission would have. shifted you just gotta really rev her up so we'll play around with that a little bit maybe call my transmission guru and see what we can figure out there because uh, we got to have more than two gears to be a daily driver first come on second Maybe it didn't even go to second. I don't know. We'll do a little uh, investigation. Cripes almighty, nothing's ever easy. You know, it would've been easier to just buy a regular cab short bed, four wheel drive, but what fun is that? That doesn't make very good content. All right, did a little troubleshooting. Uh, finally figured out we tried putting the ABS module in because that's tied to the speedometer, or wheel speed. We tried putting the airbag PCU computer thinger in. That didn't fix it. Uh, I tried swapping out the speed sensor, tried cleaning it first, tried swapping it out with the old one from the 90, that didn't fix it. And finally, took the glove box out and uh, forgot to put in one of the connectors into the ECU. Now we got a speedometer and it shifted on the hoist, so we'll go outside and see if we can find Duff. Go for our first test drive. Also, while we had it in the air, uh, the right rear brake bleeder was not in good shape, so we put a new one in and bled the brakes, and they are. Mucho gas. better. Yeah, got a full tank gas. So, brakes are always good. Duff's running around. Hey, buddy, you wanna go for a ride? Of course I do. Oh. Oh. We got door pins to put in. We still gotta figure out the door panel situation though. See how she does. Hopefully we grab some gears. Oh yeah. There we go. Pretty good, huh, Duff? I want to get rid of that sliding rear window because they whistle and leak and never really utilize them. And uh, obviously we're going to get the heat and the AC working, so you don't need to open the rear window if you got AC. It's missing some of the rubber seals. This thing was out of California, so a lot of the seals just dried up and deteriorated and rotted away, so. Same thing as we did in the 92. That thing is from Oklahoma, and all the rubber was cooked out of it, so we'll have to put all that stuff in. But, yeah. Can we get the exhaust dialed in, get the interior done, and the seals in. We'll be a good driver, for sure. I really like these OBSs. Like they're uh, they're good rigs. Except for the temp gauge is going to nuclear right now. I wonder what that's all about. Check gauges. No way that thing is sm this smoking hot already. I wonder if we forgot to plug something else in. Oh yeah, brakes feel good. Oh, I got front end parts coming for it too because the ball joints are shot. Pitman arm, idler, tie rod ends, all that stuff. It's cooked. 
says she's hot, but the top radiator hose is not even hot at all. So I don't know if we got an air pocket or if it's the gauge or the sender. This, like I said, this is where things get lost, out of control. Spiral is uh, tying up all these loose ends, getting the window seals in there, finishing the interior. Uh, getting the exhaust leak figured out, going through the front end. It's just overwhelming. And uh, something like the speedometer not working and the uh, transmission not shifting can uh, really kill a project. So hopefully we can power through on this one. Uh, I think we're deep enough into this one with all the parts we bought, the new tires, and buying the pickup and parting out another pickup. and. We got a lot of labor in this thing. We don't got a lot of money into it right now, but labor-wise, we're uh, pretty deep. Ah, there the thermostat opened up. Now she dropped down to 160. Must have just been an air pocket or something in there, duff. So yeah, projects, they're fun. That's why it's, you're almost always better off to just buy a run and drive and pick up. You could probably buy a pickup like this for, I don't know, it's hard to say four to six grand uh, it's probably not going to be as clean as this one but it's not going to be a butt half 90 half 96 but we had to buy a nice like i think i saw one last year and a guy wanted 25 grand for it and he probably was never going to get it but it was a really nice regular cab short bed and four wheel drive but anyway we won't talk about prices because there's always people out there that are like that's a fifteen hundred dollar pickup. Durr, 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 durr. Well, every regular cab, rust-free, short bed you got—I don't care if it's two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive—I'll give you fifteen hundred bucks for it if you drop it off at my place. So hit us up, morsecarepairgmail.com for your rust-free regular cab, short beds delivered. I'll even spot you a few bucks to deliver it. So yeah, I'm glad the temp gauge went down. Must have just been an air pocket underneath the uh, thermostat. It took a second to open up. It's shifting good. It goes down the road surprisingly well for as worn out as the front end is. Since we didn't have a gauge cluster, I really have no idea how many miles are on this thing. But it's the front end is she is used up. But it should be a good uh, winter beater. We'll probably get some. I don't know what fluid film is that you called and spray the bottom side to try to prevent you know rusts from occurring or getting any worse because they do use salt on the roads here uh, hopefully that'll take care of it. we're usually pretty good about washing the stuff that gets salt on it and then plus we got the expedition for stuff like that that thing that thing even gets washed once in a while but usually when it's crappy out and there's a lot of salt that's that's what gets taken because that thing's super soggy and rusty and that thing is an absolute billy goat in the snow on ice whatever like the hercules tires that are on that thing really, no hand cuts hand cuts that thing's solid so yeah why do i like obs's um they're just a huge improvement over the square bodies i kind of wanted to get ahead of the curve and snag a few up we've been snagging a few parts pickups up but uh, I think the curve has caught up to us these things are getting super popular but they got a better insulation better cabs uh, better seats they pretty much all have power windows locks screws tilts AC all those amenities where they were a little bit harder to find on the square bodies uh, they almost all had overdrive and then these later ones, you could get ABS and airbags if you're into that. Believe it or not, we had all the lights off on the dash. Now the brake light is on. So I don't know what's going on there. But for some reason, the airbag light doesn't come on. And uh, I'm all right with that. So yeah, she should be a good rig. You get cup holders in these. This one, I found out, has since been busted. But yeah, square body, no cup holders. Parts are dirt cheap for these things. They're all over out there. Um, there it's almost getting to the point where a lot of these salvage yards don't have any obs pickups because they're uh phased out you know there's not i shouldn't say a ton of them on the road but 
they're they're moving to newer, bigger, and better things, I guess. But yeah, that's why I like these things. They got a lot of the amenities that the square bodies didn't have, and they're just they're tighter cabs. Everything, everything was a big improvement. But once we get the interior done in this thing, the hard part's going to be getting the the door panels figured out. I think what we're going to probably end up doing is having to convert this thing to power windows because those door panels are a dime a dozen. It's hard to find one of these things with roll-up windows and then of course you got to get it in tan or not tan but gray and a lot of these pickups came with red or blue interiors as well which is god awful. Uh, the boys in Oklahoma uh, are on my side on that one but tan or gray is the way to go. Gray is definitely top notch but these things did have pretty piss poor door panels. They crack out and if, if you don't keep after the door hinges which are not so great the pins and their heavy doors it wears those out and then your door panel catches on your pickup cab and then next thing you know it rips it off and they're junk so the uh, OBS door panels leave a lot to be desired early ones late ones it don't matter but uh, I think that's what we're gonna have to do next is try to because this door doesn't shut worth the crap So we'll probably have to put door pins in it and then figure out how we can convert it to uh, The new style door panels and probably convert it to power windows, which is fine. I actually kind of like These power windows. These power windows are way better than the square body. Those square bodies are so god awful slow. Just absolutely horrendous But anyway Yeah, we put about six miles on Everything seems to be working all right. Temp came down, we got oil pressure, batteries charging. Like I said, we got pretty much all the lights working except for the license plate light. So yeah, this thing's gotta work a few bucks out, but I think she's pretty much road worthy now. We'll uh, keep you updated as we go. Go check out the merch, mortski.com. Uh, be prepared for the giveaway. We're gonna give away the old uh, whistle pig. Go check out the uh, free Mortski merch that we just launched. We got new sweatshirts available. The old sweatshirts are on clearance. Uh, we should have flannels coming up shortly. We're gonna get low life shirts back in stock. Um, we got the pry bars. We got Chin put together some, some tool kits. We've been selling a lot of those. It's kind of a combination of uh, the screwdrivers and pry bars and pens and I don't even know what else he's got in there, but he's got some good stuff, so go check that out at merch at mortski.com. All right, we made her home. So thank you very much. I appreciate everybody who's watched. Um, go check out the other videos, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. OBS's are fun, especially when they shift out of first gear.